Hi guys, I'm Dean. And I'm Ben. And we are on the hook. And, uh, anyway, uh, today guys, we are going to, uh, this is another episode of Getting to Know on the Hook. And, uh, we got a few things we're going to talk about and let you guys know what's going on on the show and, and what our plans are and let you in on a few other interesting things that have happened in the last little while. Um, anyway, um, just before I get started though, I want to do a shout out to, uh, Glennis Thompson, a.k.a. Grandma. My Grandma. Yeah, Ben's Grandma, but still, I call her Grandma, she's a great lady. Anyway, Grandma customized some pillows for us, Ben will give you a good clear view of that. Yeah, here, I'm gonna get up so I can make sure this is where a cameraman would be nice. Oh yeah, you can see it perfectly. There you you go. got all the species of fish. Yeah. Or not all of them, just some of the... A great assortment of fish. Yeah. It's awesome. Some of the fish that we still dream of catching. <laughs> Actually, no. We've caught all of the ones on this pillow. Most of them, yeah. I we think all the of them. We got the uh, brook trout, perch, um, walleye. Yeah, we caught them all. Yeah, we've and the brown trout. That's the only one we haven't got. Yeah, the brown. So, but we will get them. But anyway, that thank you, Grandma. These yeah, are awesome. Yeah, thank you, Grandma. And uh, of course, our logo. I'm gonna get closer here. Just gonna show you that close up. My grandma hand did this for us, and uh, we're Absolutely. very happy with it. Very. This very looks happy. amazing. So it fits right in here, and this is where we'll be doing or getting getting to know on the hooks. So anyway, let's get right into it. First topic on the list is our transition from British Columbia to Saskatchewan. Now that's been an interesting thing. It really has been. Now, first thing I'm going to go into is um, viewers. Now, I think we dropped what? Oh, about uh, two thirds of our viewers from at the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. At the beginning, we dropped about two thirds of our viewers because of the, uh, the the moving to Saskatchewan, but uh, it seems they're coming back. It's 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 beautiful. Uh, things are picking up. Um, second thing I'm going to get into here is is the fishing. Now I'll let Ben get on this, but the, the fishing here is outstanding, especially at opening. Yeah, uh, I would. Uh... I would uh, like to say that uh, the fishing here is, in comparison, night and day. You yeah. can you can throw a lure, you can throw a minnow, throw a worm, you can throw just about anything, and you're gonna catch a fish. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, there's there's some stuff that just doesn't work, but if you're patient enough, everything works here. That's right. Absolutely. Um, the species of fish, uh, there's a lot of them. As there was in BC, there was a lot of fish, just the majority of fish in BC were small. Pretty small, yeah. yeah. And the comparison. the comparison here is uh, you can eat all the fish. I yeah, mean, generally. Some, some people might argue that and mm -hmm. would say, you know, like you can eat all the fish in BC too, but That's right. it depends on your preference what you want to eat. But personally, I didn't think I'd like pike. But it was actually pretty it good. It was really good. Surprising. Um, perch and walleye, well, they're... Everybody knows about them. They're, they're good. Delicious. And we've, uh, yeah, we started our gardening, which you're going to see That's in our another shorts. transition, yeah. We started uh, doing shorts recently because actually uh, YouTube that kind of pointed us in the right direction to put shorts out to direct people to some of our videos. And so that's what we've been doing. I um, opened up a, a TikTok account to put out little shorts and stuff to bring more people to the show, and it's worked. It's we've, actually it's very been very good. We've gotten a, a huge foreign audience, not super huge, no, but but we've been getting a lot more people from outside Canada viewing the show than we ever thought we would, and we love it. And we will, actually that brings us into our next situation our next topic um 
we'd like to do a shout out. First, we want to do a shout out to all our viewers, to anybody and everybody that's been watching us. We appreciate everybody, and we can't thank you enough for for viewing the show. Even the people that just watched one episode and thought, okay, these guys aren't for me. Yeah. You gave us a view. We appreciate every view. Yeah. Um, the, all thanks, the feedback. Thanks. For the, uh, shout out to the subscribers. Shout out to our viewers, and even shout out to the haters. Yeah. But. Today, we want to do a shout out to, we were going through our app, and we could see uh, what cities in Canada are giving us the most views. And on our list, top of the list, was Toronto. So shout out to every all the viewers in Toronto. Hope we can make it to Toronto someday and film a video there. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. We're looking forward to, that, that would be great. And we actually, we're hoping to this year, you never know. Okay, second shout out goes to Calgary, comes up number two on our list. And uh, well, we'd like to say shout out to everybody in Calgary. And you know what? We've already done three spots in, in Alberta, but we would really like to get back and do several more spots. And in, somewhere around Calgary would be great. Anyway, number three is Montreal. Now, I'm amazed. Montreal, I didn't expect that. So, anyway, you never know. We might get out to that area one day, and hopefully sooner than later. It all depends on how many more views we get. The more views we get, the more money we make, <laughs> and the more places we can go. So, shout out to Montreal. Thank you, people. Thank you very much. And fourth on the list fourth is Edmonton. List. Absolutely, yeah. Now, Dean's been to Edmonton. I, I, lived, I actually lived in Edmonton for about eight months. And uh, I enjoyed it. It was nice. But I was homesick for BC at the time. And, well, I ended up back in Prince George. But that's another story. We'll uh, definitely be going there to fish someday. Absolutely. So, shout out to everybody in Edmonton. Thank you guys for your views. And fifth on the list. And surprisingly, I, I expected Vancouver being number five on the list, I expected you guys to be higher because that, that's where we came from in the, to start with, basically. Uh, so anyway, shout out to all the viewers out in Vancouver, all the viewers out in the Fraser Valley. And all the viewers that our app didn't give us. That's right, absolutely. I've got family in Germany and it didn't give me a single city from Germany and I know where our views are coming from. Yeah. And so, so anyway, shout out to everybody. Absolutely. But anyway, we're going to do some shout-outs to the top five countries that have been really paying attention to the show. Top of the list, you'll never guess. U.S. <laughs> the U.S. Thank yes. you, everybody thank from you. the U.S. Yeah, everybody down south, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, next on the list, list this one really this one shocked us both. Russia. Russia was number two on the list. Well, thank you, everybody in Russia who's paying attention to our show. Shout-out to you guys. Number three on the list. Now, this is another surprise. Indonesia. Indonesia. That's a shocker. Yeah, I, I, I have no so. idea we would get that. That's crazy. And then uh, fourth on the list. Now, we, we started off getting a few views from this spot. United Kingdom. But folks. it's been coming Thank on more all. and more, and we really appreciate it. So shout out to the United Kingdom for number fourth position in, in our shout out of top five. And last on the list... Is India now the numbers from India they started out slow but they've been picking up a lot too appreciate every single one of you anyway guys hope you're I uh, hope you keep paying attention we got more videos to come spring opening is coming and we'll be on it you just stick with us and you'll see a lot of videos to come and hopefully some better footage as well anyway let's move on to the next topic Okay, uh, we're going to touch on monetization. Well, anyway, guys, we've been monetized now since basically October. Um, our views have been lower than they were than when we were on the on the coast, so basically our pay out, pay has been lower. So, but we finally reached the threshold threshold. And we're getting paid this month. Now, th 
this has been uh, uh, an up and down ride for us. It's been exciting. It's been um, aggravating. aggravating at times. It's been stressful. But at the same time, it's been fun. Just fun. to document our adventures and watch them again. Me, personally, I've got a really bad memory. And it's nice to just be able to go back and watch some of our days of fishing when the fishing was good the weather was good even when the weather was bad but the fishing was good it's nice to relive those moments and just to share them with all of you yeah everybody who's watched and and enjoyed our videos even those of you who haven't enjoyed our videos yeah. thanks for watching yeah, absolutely you know we, we we started this for friends and family and didn't think really honestly we'd ever get to monetization we'd ever reach the threshold and we would get to this point now we're here and we wouldn't be able to have done this without you guys. Absolutely. And I have to do a shout out to my kids for getting me into this. Um, yeah, I'm, I hope you guys are happy. You, you, you did it. You pushed us into this. And now I actually, Ben and I are getting paid within five days for fishing. For making fishing videos. Yeah. I mean, come on. This couldn't make a guy happier. So... Anyway, yeah, so there's a little touch on what we're doing with the monetization and uh, hopefully this spring will pick up and we'll get some more money. We'll get paid yeah. even more so we can get out and do more. The more money we make, the more we can do. Anyway, on to the next topic. i got to put my glasses on here because I, I have to have glasses for reading. And our next topic, guys, is... Um, what Ben and I are doing in our personal lives, what, what's happening with us? Well, I don't know if a lot of you know about this or not, but we have started a business, D&B Services, um, based here, here in Buchanan, and uh, we'll be servicing all the little towns around us, and uh, so far things have been slow, but then when, you've got to expect that in winter, and we're just starting up our business, so we, we knew it was going to be slow. But it looks very promising for spring. We've, I think we've made a good impression with some, some great people. And hopefully that's going to turn into work for us. Um, we do a little bit of everything. We, uh, you know, lawn maintenance, snow removal, um, power, power washing, just a little bit of everything. So, we will leave a link of some sort in this video, hopefully, um, to our business. But uh, that's what we pretty much do in our, in our spare time. We do moving and, and stuff that we still that we were doing when we were on the coast. But uh, here in Saskatchewan, moving is not as uh, big as it was when we were in BC. Um, <coughs> But generally, yeah, we spend most of our time fishing when we're not working. Um, otherwise, we're doing little projects towards fishing, <laughs> such as um, repairing our, our reels, maintaining the reels and the rods, stuff like that. You'll be seeing some shorts and videos on that coming soon. And uh, we've been doing some... Um, we got an unboxing coming because we've had some stuff given to us and uh, of course there will be uh, more videos to come on new equipment but uh, we have a whole lot of old equipment that we're going to be uh, that we've maintained and we're going to be using in future videos because we've never made a big deal about our, our gear and one of the things that I'm quite fond of when it comes to fishing is making it cheap enough so that you can enjoy fishing more often like uh, I prefer um, rods such as uh, a Zebco or um, Shakespeare or ugly stick the more affordable rods and uh, I think that I think Ben probably agrees with me on this. Yeah, I do. Um, my my favorite rod, I gotta say, is the ugly stick. Um, 
I mean, I recently have been using the Shakespeare Navigator, which from it's my... It's a six foot six, Robin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think it was a six... Six, it yeah, a six, six or six foot six. Yeah. But it's, um, I would say it's just a different colored ugly stick. The flexibility, the durability, it's an amazing rod for it not being an ugly stick. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, my whooping stick, I I did some research on, and I love that rod. That's a rebranded ugly stick. It's a rebranded re ugly stick, but cheaper. Yeah. yeah. And you Which can I actually pretty darn cool. You actually. can actually order the rod itself without a reel for next to nothing. Yeah, and we've got fifteen spare reels. Oh no, there's more than that. There's got to be almost twenty spare reels sitting there. So, so we're gonna need some rods this year. Because we've broken a few, actually. Yes. Yeah. Me, I break the tips off them. Ben breaks them in half on snags and shit. Excuse my yeah. language. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I've, over the years of doing this, I've bought some expensive rods and broken them. I bought this one mooching rod. Dean warned me about it. And first snag I get, I blew up the rod. I wish I'd have got that on camera, but... Yeah. Buying expensive equipment and having it break is just like burning money. Absolutely. And the funny thing is, I found I've broken less rods when I get it, well, especially ugly sticks. They're, they're, they're really hard to break, unless you jam them in a door or something stupid like that. But um, generally, they're very durable rods. And then I'd say if close behind that is the Shakespeare and the Zebcos. And I find with them is the tips break off too easy. And that's where the problem lies for me is I break tips off. Stupidity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, guys, let's move on to another topic here. And uh, let's see what we got here. We're going to... Uh, oh, yes, we've got uh, lots of plans for the spring and the summer. Hmm. Now... We have a 12-foot aluminum boat, two gas motors, which I'm hoping to have finally running for the next season. We took them in to a mechanic, and it yeah, just it just didn't seem to work for some reason. And so anyway, this year we will get them working. If it kills me, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we will get them working, and we will have the aluminum out with the motors this this season but we also have plans to take out the canoe now <laughs> the only thing that we're concerned about with the canoe and, and there's a lot of beautiful spots out here that we would consider perfect for canoeing is the darn wind yeah the wind <coughs> the wind has kept us from going fishing oh absolutely because on many been, occasions it's been so cold here um, at times. For, at times. For us, we don't have an ice fishing tent. We don't have a shack right now. But we plan to have that stuff for next season. Absolutely. Um, we should be fully outfitted. The tent, heater, the whole kit and caboodle for next season. Cross your fingers. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. we've got a lot of spots in mind for this spring. Um... So like with the ice fishing, uh, it's, it's our first season here. We came to visit this beautiful province when my parents initially moved to Saskatchewan. And the first time we came out, all we caught was little fish. Yeah. But Little tiny hammer handles. Since we've been here, it's almost hard to find little fish. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, the tough part about Saskatchewan... And something that I am on the fence about is the trout fishing. It's extremely hard. <laughs> yeah. uh, Other than our little trout pond in Yorkton, catching trout here has been difficult. But we're going to try to change that this season. Um, but yeah, it is it is, it's a different place. It, it, it really is. The fishing is so different. The Fraser Valley doesn't freeze up like this. It doesn't, there's no deep cold, there's no um, three feet of ice on a lake. That kind of stuff does not happen in the Fraser Valley. So, you pretty much have open water all year round down there. And here, 
you got to work with the ice. And so that's been a real challenge for us, a serious challenge, especially on those cold days. Um, on those days where there's a lot of cold slush on the ice, that, those, that there was a couple days like that. But next year, we will be prepared for it. And we're looking forward to right now is, is opening this spring. And after the fishing we, we experienced when we came here, we, we literally, when I first started looking for a house here, we came here in May. And uh, it was May 4th, and we showed up in the evening. And we stayed at a motel. And then we, the next morning, a motel in Sturgis, and the next morning we went down to the park there and with no expectations on catching fish or even thinking about it, right? We were just, they were there, we had some time, we figured, hell, let's just throw our lines in. Threw our lines in and from that moment on, uh, the, the excitement just ran right through us from these huge pike and, and walleye and everything that we were catching even right there on the Assiniboine River, right in Sturgis, it caught me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the carp here are massive. Yeah. Um, there's a fish here that we didn't have on the coast. We've yet to catch some of them, but the ones we've caught were fun. Oh, yeah. The channel catfish, the, the gold eye, they were fun. They fight really hard. Um, Oh my gear. Being able to catch walleye and perch and f eat them and uh, they're they're good. I'd rather eat the walleye and the perch and even a pike over going to the store and buying frozen fish. It's fresh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to actually getting on some trout and smoking some trout. We got a Absolutely. smoker. Absolutely. We got a smoker. That's something we're going to be doing very soon too is smoking some fish. Or some meat. We may even make some jerky in it, just for, just for something to do. Anyway, let's get on to the next topic, and I think we've pretty much covered everything so far. I might be right down to the last couple things. Uh, let's see. Let's put my glasses on because I can't read. <laughs> Everybody, make a laughing face emoji. <laughs> it's going blind. Hey. Last couple things on the list. Uh, hopes and dreams for our fishing show in the next little while. Well, we, I have a lot of things that I have to take care of this year, so it's going to be very challenging for us to hit the goals that we wanted to hit even last year. Um, but still to be hopeful, um, I would like to make it to Lake of the Woods or Lake Simcoe out in Ontario. And, or is it Lake of the Woods in Ontario? Yeah, Lake of the Woods, Ontario. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And if he's wrong, anyway, <laughs> comment in the comments. Way, let me know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I agree with Simcoe and Lake of the Woods. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I gotta be realistic with how many trips we're gonna be able to make. And hopefully we'll be able to make one. And hopefully that'll be to Ontario. And yeah, because that would be add another province to our list. We've been really trying to work our way across the country. We got BC, we got Alberta, Saskatchewan, of course, Manitoba. We still have lots more to do on that one, but uh, we'd love to put Ontario on the list. Yeah. So, I mean, the goal eventually is to hit every province in Canada, ladies and gentlemen. And the more you like, share, and watch our videos. Oh yeah, watch the, watch the quicker we can accomplish that goal. Absolutely. To fish all the provinces in Canada, and if we ever make it, like it's like Dean was saying, hopes and dreams. Well, if we ever make it to that hundred thousand subscriber marker, and we're able to just go fishing, and to hit every lake in. Well, well, just yeah, that would be a dream come true. You know, every every, every lake. place that we could possibly get to, but that's probably we gotta never be realistic, gonna and we gotta <laughs> we gotta think about the locations that are going to be possible. <laughs> huh? So anyway, on to the last topic, guys. 
Ben and I have started introducing some different content onto the show. Starting with some shorts we've been putting out about, well, we put I think we put out one about the cat. Yeah. One or two about the cat. Um, and maybe three, two or three about uh, gardening. But uh, we're going to be adding more updates about uh, wind our window garden. But in the spring, we're planning on having a huge garden out front. And we will be doing some videos on gardening. So that's coming very soon, guys. It's going to be another couple months and we will be chilling up the yard. And we will film, we'll film most of it so that we can show you guys what we're up to. But uh, anyway, guys, I think we've pretty much covered everything. Unless there's something Ben wants to uh, get off his chest. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, yeah, I mean, we, we've been enjoying this from the very moment we started it. Right now, we're not getting to the places we want to get to. But it's coming soon. It's coming very soon. The, the winter season has been a tough one for us. Oh, yeah. Um, the, yeah, I'll, I'll touch on the ice fishing in and, and winter. The, Dean's got some experience ice fishing. Me, none. <laughs> and my patience level has never been good. Uh, I hate bottom fishing, even though I do it a lot. I hate it. Uh, it works to catch fish. That's why I do it. Um, but ice fishing, even if you have a fish finder, and the camera now, and you can see a fish, and it won't bite. That that drives me nuts. But this next ice fishing season, I'm looking forward to hopefully having a shack, have a tent. Absolutely. Not have to be in the elements. That was the worst part, being in the wind. and yeah, It's yeah. always windy here. Yeah, and when you spend hours, and it's minus 11 or 12 or 15 or 18 or whatever it was when we were out most of the time. I think we got lucky and it was pretty warm for most of our trips, but there was a couple that were like minus 11, minus 18. And one day the and camera froze. Wind blowing, yeah, the camera, we had a hard time with that. Camera freezing up regularly. But anyway, guys, down to our last little thing. One last thing I wanted to do, and this is a shout out that needs to be done. We already said thank you to Grandma for the for the customized pillows and, uh, yeah, and our, beautiful. our emblem right there for us. We're going to be... Every time we do one of these getting to know on the hooks, we'll be using that. So thank you, Grandma. But we also want to thank uh, Ben's parents, Gabby and uh, Mark, for everything they're doing for us and they have done for us since we got here. Without them, we don't know where we'd be. They've, they've been uh, the backbone for us for a long time. And we appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. And we appreciate everybody else who watches the show and guys... Stick with us and we'll put out some more content very soon. Like, share, subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one, guys.